Let the meditation of my mind and my heart and the words of my mouth bless these your people. Amen. So we have another parable today. We seem to be in a season of parables. Last week we have the parable of the sower. And this Sunday we have the wheat and the weeds, often referred to as the wheat and the tares. And as I've said before, theologians have lots of fun discussing what different words mean and try to work out what, what are tares. So people have gone into a lot of um, effort to do digging on ground in Israel and other places to try and work what is this, what are these tares, what are these weeds? And they've come up with lots of different ideas. But what we do know from this parable is that the weeds perhaps look very similar to the wheat. So one weed, I can't pronounce the name because it's in Latin, <laughs> is often referred to as false wheat. It looks exactly the same as the wheat until it produces its seed. And instead of two ears of corn, it has one ear. But if you eat it, it'll make you throw up and throw up <laughs> and throw up. So it's very important that you separate the weed and the tears, tears when you harvest. And often we have lots of ways of separating those things <coughs> that are bad for us. And I was just reflecting on this and reflecting about what to think about. And then I looked at this passage. And I looked at how the farmer had sowed his seed, and then you have your kind of first example of bioterrorism, where someone comes and sows something else in the seed, in an effort to disrupt the farmer's harvest, an effort to destroy the farmer's gain, to change the outcome, to uproot the livelihood. And his workers come to him and say, let's go and take up all the weeds, all the tears, let's just get rid of them. And the farmer, being a wise farmer, says, no, let's wait to the end, because one, we might not be able to tell which is which. If you're a gardener, you might probably know that often when seeds start sprouting, it's very difficult when they're really tiny to tell the difference between what's a weed and what's not. So you have to wait till the leaves develop. So the farmer said, leave it. And I think this gives us a picture of who God is. That God is one who cares for all of us, regardless of whether we're the, the weeds or the wheat. He cared for that field, the world, regardless of who people are or how they're living. You know, he would have had to feed and water it in the same way, regardless of what the outcome of that particular seed would have been. And that tells us something about who God is. That God cares for all of humanity, regardless of what our lives are. He doesn't like the outcomes of what we produce in our lives. And we have to account for that outcome at the end of the age, when the angels come and take that harvest. We have to account for how we live. But I was also thinking that this is a picture of mission. Often we're encouraged to separate ourselves from the world, to keep ourselves a little bit distant from others. But if we want to see change in people's lives, then we have to live alongside those people who are not people of faith, those people who do not know who Jesus is. We have to share our will, our field, with other people who are different to us. And I was thinking of GM crops and thinking, well, if we change this to normal wheat and GM crops, and I'm not going to say which is bad, but we as Christians have been modified and changed by the grace of the Creator. We have been changed from the original wheat into something very different. And if you know anything about GM, the the issue is that their seed spreads on the wind, on the wind, sorry, and changes the original crops. So when we live next to other people, how we live, what we do, what we say, perhaps has an opportunity 
to change other people. Perhaps how we live will speak into our lives. What we say will have a word at the right time to them. It will make them think about who they are, who God is. So I think we're called to be those wheats in the field that live alongside the tares to encourage them to think about their lives. One of my favourite authors called Dr. Robert Beckford, a black theologian, talks about how if we seek transformation in other people's lives, we have to be prepared to be open to being changed ourselves. So the danger is that when we're in the world, we can be changed and transformed by those around us. But sometimes that's good. We need to be challenged about what our preconceptions are. We need to be challenged about when we believe what we believe, or when we just speak it with our mouths and don't live it with our lives. Is it something that is more than just in my brain? Is it something that is more than skin deep? Is it something that comes out of every pore of who I am? Has the modification that Jesus has made in my life changed me completely? And am I prepared to challenge myself by talking to others? Because sometimes, perhaps God will speak to me through those I know. God will challenge me through the ways of other people who may not be of the Christian faith, who may not be followers of Christ. Their life, their words, their deeds may challenge me to think, do I believe what I believe? How does my faith affect what I do? And then we, we have to be open to that change whenever we meet people wherever they are, as we go out into the world, as we exist amongst other people, are we being open to being changed by God? <clears throat> Just as we expect other people to change, will we let him change us? Speak into our lives, speak into what we do. Allow ourselves to think differently. Think about how we practice those tiny acts of righteousness, kindness and goodness to extend God's kingdom by each step, each word we take and say. Saying consistently when we come together, I will choose the way of life. As we come together in communion, we remind ourselves of what Christ did for us. Who we are as God's people. And we are challenged to renew our baptismal vows again as we take the body and blood of Christ. As we acknowledge his presence in this place inside of us, we are challenged once again to say, change me, O God. Change me, O God, as I receive the gift you have given me. Enable me to take that change out into the world, to carry your witness but also to recognise where your witness is present in others. To be generous. And think about how we can grow as weeds in the world that the God has given us. And encourage other people to do the same, to recognise where God is at work in their lives. So that all may see God's kindness and mercy throughout the world. Amen.